Welcome to Art Unplugged. I'm Boriana, I'm an artist and I like to talk about art the way I see it. Today I want to talk to you about a painting which for those in the know is a much bigger deal than the Mona Lisa. Sorry. It is called Las Meninas by Diego Velázquez and can be seen in the Museum of Prado in Madrid. There are paintings that unravel in front of us willingly and there are others that are elusive and mysterious, opening a question each time we think we have found an answer. Las Meninas is one such painting. When he saw it in 1856, Edouard Manet said that it alone made travel to Madrid worthwhile. Picasso got absolutely obsessed with it and produced 56 interpretations of his own. And Salvador Dali, when asked what would be the one thing that he would save from the Prado in case of fire, answered the air of Las Meninas. So let's see what's this all about. Velázquez painted Las Meninas in 1656 for King Philip IV of Spain. At that time, the artist was at the peak of his career as a court painter, which he combined with the time-consuming job of aposentador mayor, something like a facilities manager for the palace, which is eluded by the keys which are hanging from his belt. Velázquez was in charge for everything from buying wood to looking after His Majesty's bedding, to curating the Royal Art Collection. Sounds like a nuisance, doesn't it? But for Velázquez, it was a token of the King's favor and a serious advantage in his strife for knighthood, something really hard to achieve, but very important for him, because he wanted to raise the social rank of artists above that of craftsmen and artisans, which they were considered at the time. The central figure in Las Meninas is the Infanta Margarita, the only surviving child of Philip IV and his wife Mariana of Austria at the time. She is five years old and most certainly hates that dress. But that's another story. Velázquez painted the Infanta many times at different ages. In this painting she is surrounded by her entourage, which includes two ladies in waiting, called in Spanish Meninas, hence the title of the painting, two dwarfs, a dog, a chaperone and a bodyguard. On the left side we see the artist himself standing in front of a huge canvas holding the tools of his trade. In the background there is an open door and a figure of a man who is either coming in or going out of the room and a mirror with a vague reflection of the king and queen. Though not clear at first glance, it appears that the artist is painting the royal couple. The Infanta and her entourage have entered the room interrupting the painting session with their clamor and movement. There is nothing of the notorious pomp and rigid protocol of the Spanish court in this scene. On the contrary, we see spontaneity, immediacy. It feels like a snapshot, if not a family video. What's more, these characters were very unlikely to find themselves together in a real-life setting. This is not a real scene, but one choreographed by Velázquez with a lot of deliberation, both visually and in terms of meaning. So let's take a closer look, shall we? An awful lot has been said about the composition and geometry of Las Meninas, but I will draw your attention only to a few important things. First, the canvas has been divided into seven layers of depth. The first, shallowest layer begins with the projecting canvas at the left of the picture plane and encompasses the dwarf kicking the dog on the right side. The second level consists of the Infante and her maids. The third, Velázquez, the chaperone and the bodyguard. The fourth, the rear wall of the room. The fifth, the space beyond the open door with the male figure. The sixth, the space of the mirror's reflection. And finally, the seventh layer is a space outside of the picture plane where the king, queen and viewers stand. This virtual space is implied by the reflection in the mirror. Here is a scheme which helps you imagine this. 
and it shows that in fact what we see in the mirror is actually a reflection of the canvas which Velasquez is working on. This is important, later we'll see why. To instill order in Las Meninas, Velasquez used a system of curved and diagonal lines. He arranged the figures in the foreground along an X shape with the Infanta Margarita in the center, thus emphasizing her importance and making the five-year-old child the focal point of the composition. Velasquez masterfully used light and shadow to create a system of double arcs that further centralizes the Infanta. Painting her almost pure white further makes the small girl stand out against the rest of the scene which is cast in shadows. And although the Infanta is the center of the composition, Velasquez put his hand holding the palette and brushes in the golden section of the composition. Something that cannot be by chance. So how is all this interpreted? It is certain that by including himself in this intimate family scene, Velasquez wanted to show himself as a part of the family. And indeed, he and the king had an unusually close friendship. Contemporary reports suggest that Velasquez was perhaps one of the king's closest friends and confidants. Legend has it that it was Philip IV himself who painted the Red Cross of the Order of Santiago on Velázquez's chest in Las Meninas after the artist passed away, a death which came as a terrible blow for the monarch. Nevertheless, it was inappropriate for an artist to portray himself next to his king, and Velázquez found an ingenious way to do that. In Las Meninas, he is standing next to his patron's reflected images in the mirror. Another interpretation is based on a speculation that as the Infanta was the only surviving child of the king at the time, he was considering grooming her to be the future ruler of the country. Las Meninas might have been commissioned as an initial attempt to build the image of the young princess as a future divinely appointed queen. A really hard sell in the hardly patriarchal Spanish society of the 17th century. There is even an astrological explanation of Las Meninas. Quite possible, considering that the king was often consulting astrologists and Velázquez himself owned books on the subject and two telescopes. According to this interpretation, if the hearts of the five main figures are connected with an imaginary line, they will form the constellation Corona Borealis, the central star of which is called Margarita Coronae, and coincides with the heart of the Infanta. Also, it is said that the light that comes through the windows coincides with 23rd of December 1656, the birthday of the Queen. In a more general sense, Las Meninas is seen as a reflection on reality and illusion, life and art, something that preoccupied the literati of the Spanish Baroque period. The ambiguous relationship of the viewer to the painting blurs the border between art and life. Are we standing next to the king and queen? Or are we viewing the scene through their eyes? Either way, we are brought into the illusionary world of the painting. The next thing to consider is the role of the mirror. In art history, the mirror traditionally has been seen as an emblem of the artist because it reflects the world the way art strives to do. Velázquez has used mirrors in several of his works. Here, placing his canvas and a mirror facing each other, he puts the question, which is truer to reality, the reflection in the mirror or what is painted on the canvas? When considered in this light, Velázquez's painting is a surprisingly modern reflection on the act of painting and the nature of art itself. And then there is another interesting aspect to this extraordinary painting. Try to forget all the details and look at it once again as a whole. Doesn't it give you the feeling that it was you who just stepped into this scene and everybody stopped and turned their eyes towards you to see who has just entered? In this scenario, we, the viewers, actually make the scene happen at the moment of looking at it. This kind of interaction between viewer and artwork is typical for contemporary artworks. 
Think about the infinite installations of Yayoi Kusama, for example, where our presence makes the artwork happen. But nothing like this was seen in art before Las Meninas, a fact which made the French philosopher Michel Foucault call it a landmark in the evolution of thought. If the Mona Lisa is the most popular painting, Las Meninas is probably the most analyzed, dissected, interpreted artwork in history. What I just told you merely scratches the surface. There has been everything from numerological theories to computer simulations of it. Which makes me wonder, did Velázquez intend all the things that we see in his painting? Or are we not going too far in projecting our own ideas onto his work? And if we are, is there anything wrong with it? What do you think would be his reaction to our interpretations of his work? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you found this video interesting. Please give it a like, share and subscribe. If you want to see my work, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Minterest. All the links are in the description below. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Bye.